Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the, the greatest era of action movies. Although, we have something a little different this week. This is our second episode of You Should Watch It. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback on our first You Should Watch It for Red Surf. Now, that might be because of Clooney. It might be because he gets <laughs> burned like bacon in the microwave at <laughs> the end of it. <laughs> <Christy>. <laughs> I think that's why. But did they ever make it to Portland? <laughs> We're never going to know. That's the sad part about this. <laughs> but this is our second You Should Watch It. And we went a little further out there. You know, we don't talk about action movies, karate movies. Well, see, we were torn. There was a serious debate over if we should watch Never Too Young to Die, which is a gymnastics karate movie with John Stamos, where people ride yes. horsey motorcycles. Tempting. <laughs> <laughs> we also talked about The Raid, which came out in 2011, which I, and I watched like, the first hour of it. I gotta go back to that movie. Like That is right in our wheelhouse, although we don't normally talk about new movies, because <laughs> I mentioned before, modern action movies died the day Bad Max Fury Road came out. <laughs> <laughs> the raid, the raid is. I can't wait to watch that one. And there's a number two. So, oh boy, yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> with some of these Netflix films, I think the action movies are coming back because we're starting to get a little bit more diehard hero type, or like they just Netflix just basically spent the whole last year on heist movies. You never know. Yeah, that's true. But we decided, you know what? We want action, but we love horror movies. You know what else we love? Sci-fi movies. So what if we put the two Hell together yeah. and came up with the movie Chud or Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers? <laughs> I think Chud is better. <laughs> I, have a, I have a theory. I don't know. I've never seen this movie before. And now that I've seen it and I know that there's a Chud to Bud of Chud. What? I have theory on what Bud, Bud of, of Chud, Chud what? is. Yes, I have a theory on what that is without having <laughs> zero, zero insight on what We should have watched that is. first. <laughs> Gone backwards. So. Wow. <laughs> is it a porn? I wonder... <laughs> I wonder if any of the characters made it back. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to go pull that up to see what actors come back in Chud 2. But... Because I don't think I saw it on anyone I looked up. <laughs> yeah, we don't normally get into sci-fi movies on this podcast. For a reason. We, we dabble here <laughs> and there in sci-fi. Not, you know, not, not because we don't want to. Sometimes <laughs> there's certain people in the podcast who definitely want to go sci-fi. <laughs> Uh -huh. um. And there's certain people in the podcast who definitely don't want to go sci-fi. <laughs> and that's where we are. Now. <laughs> well, you know, it'd be really funny. I'm just saying, I'm going to make you guys watch Dune eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be really funny for a season to do like, it's like a whiplash season where one episode is sci-fi and the next is rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, I don't even like rom-com movies. <laughs> I know that's pretty crazy, but I can't even watch those. I need karate in my movies, okay? <laughs> Chud had been on my list for a while. I knew that I had to see it. I knew that it's a cult movie. It's really popular. I had never seen it before. I knew that it had an interesting cast. Like, I had seen some of the names that were in it, but I had no idea until we watched it just how deep the <laughs> guest stars mm -hmm. are in this movie. So it, I was really excited to be able to watch it. Although, you know, with the raid, like, that's still still pulling on me out there. This, I'm just saying I'm going to get to that. <laughs> We don't normally do sci-fi, and we don't normally do horror, which is totally a thing in this house. We love yeah, watching we love horror movies. Horror movies, and there was a bunch of them that I really considered mm -hmm. that we we could do for you should watch it, mm -hmm. like Prom Night or um, Silver Party Massacre. That one was pretty or good. Or that Parasite movie with mm -hmm. Demi Moore. Yeah, that one's yeah, that one's really popular. Same mm -hmm. thing, practical effects too. This movie i think came out of nowhere for us and then i know for at least two people they left this movie like yeah let's watch that again yeah uh -huh. <laughs> i thought it was good i'm not gonna give i'm not gonna give too much away <laughs> a little backstory on the movie it originally premiered on august 31st 1984 it is directed by douglas cheek who does not have a wikipedia well <laughs> huh yeah. And uh, it's how? Okay. Yeah. And it's written by Parnell Hall well, it's just, and Shepard Abbott. Uh, how did he avoid one? I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe did he literally only do this and just disappear off the face of the earth? Maybe he was Chud. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Parnell Hall was not just the writer of the screenplay. He also plays Judson in the movie. Oh, I didn't know that. He's actually in the movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> what the behind the camera boils down to is that it's a bunch of nobodies. 
there's a bunch of nobodies that are behind the camera that somehow finagled a bunch of soon to be a listers <laughs> or like you know, B listers yeah, to be in this yeah. movie. You look at the people who are the main characters and you're like, I recognize them from stuff. And then you look at the people who play like extra number two. Hey, I know who that is. Like he's a big time <laughs> act. Like he actually was a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, let's, let's, this is like, you should watch it. So we keep, we're not going to go as deep into the movie. So let's go explain why we think you should watch chud beside the name the name is fantastic just to say chud repeatedly mm -hmm. i yeah. love saying chud that's, <laughs> what, that's what it boils down to <laughs> but let's go give our quick rundown on why you should watch chud <laughs> this movie sets the tone right from the very beginning with a lady walking down the middle of the road walking her dog because it's new york so, you know, there's nowhere for the dog to crap except for in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> right in that manhole cover. <laughs> she just gets like sucked in. And guys, you'll never believe it. But the woman walking the dog at the beginning of this movie, her name is Laura Matos. And she is Daniel Stern's wife, like his real life wife. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So she plays Bosch's wife in this, or uh, as we know her, the lady that gets sucked down the manhole cover. <laughs> uh, later, we do see her severed head. So she does get, like, we do see what she looks like. Was that like. really her head? No, she at least found her head. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for that dog. <laughs> Not the lady. Whatever. Like shit happens sometimes. Welcome to New York. Oh, that dog. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and as we mentioned in the opening, like this cast is deep big name stars that are in current movies make appearance. Which is it just threw me for a loop like almost every scene. Seeing yeah. someone like, Oh yeah, I recognize that guy. Oh my god, that's <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Daniel Stern. I just talked about his wife. Daniel Stern played AJ the Rev Shepherd in this. We all know him from the Home Alone movies. He played Marv. He also played Phil in City Slickers and Ken Arnold in The Wonder Years. He actually started off as like a Broadway actor. Did you guys know he directed Rookie of the Year? Uh, the what? 1993. Yeah, yeah. You know, where the kid plays baseball yeah i saw that in the armor. movie theater <laughs> <laughs> he also did a voice on 30 episodes of the animated show dilbert the other big name actor plays a main character is john hurd plays george cooper and unfortunately john hurd passed in 2017 he has 180 acting credits and uh, he was actually a respected thespian in the late 70s and early 80s. And then he got into doing film stuff. And, like, th there was this time in which it looked like John Hurd was going to be, like, a big name as an actor. And he just it just happened that his career kind of fell as more of a supporting actor. Obviously, he plays Peter McAllister in the Home Alone movies. But John Hurd was also in Big with Tom Hanks, played a corrupt detective in The Sopranos. He was also in the in the one of the Sharknado movies, too. So, Oh, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's, he's in the first he's one. He's in the original one. He's like the bartender. No, the drunk, mm. huh? Like the guy yeah. that's on the... Yeah, the drunk, George or whatever. So there's also Christopher Curry. He plays Captain Bosch. He's the cop in this. Uh, he was in Soli, Flags of Our Fathers, and uh, City of Ghosts. He was also in an episode of Crossing Jordan. Shout out. <laughs> and he was in Home Alone 3, hmm. which is weird because Home Alone 3 was the one that didn't have John Hurd or Daniel Stern. But okay. <laughs> and then our, our last like main character kind of guest star that you guys would know is Kim Greist. She plays Daniels. So in this, she plays the model girlfriend, and she was actually a model in her late years, uh, late teen years in Europe. Then she did some stage work before appearing in Chud. After the 80s was Chud, a wild her... time. <laughs> yes, yes. After Chud, her next role was is probably her most notable role. She played the blonde fantasy girl of the futuristic bureaucrat Jonathan Price in Terry Gilliam's Brazil, and then. An honorable mention, there's just a ton of big name actors who played like smaller roles in the film. John Goodman shows up as a cop in, in Diner and almost didn't recognize him. He is so skinny in this movie. <laughs> I know. He's very young. 
John Hurd's older sister actually shows up. She plays Officer Sanderson, and she was also Wally in Caddyshack. Sam McMurray, he's uh, Officer Crespi. You'd know him from Raising Arizona, L.A. Story, and The Adams Family. Hmm. Eddie Jones, who plays Chief O'Brien, was in The Terminal, Seabiscuit, also in an episode of Crossing Jordan, and A League of Their Own, <laughs> and Cadillac Man. Important. Everyone who was in Crossing Jordan is obviously important, because they're big-name <laughs> actors. And then Bill Raymond, who played Victor, was also in The Gulf Monkeys, Lincoln, Michael Clayton, but most of us would know him as The Greek on The Wire. Oh, yeah! I <laughs> It's like the wire. The wire is so great and so exhausting. Like there's people all the time. Like they're in the wire. I'm like, oh yeah. And then I have like a flashback to that season, and it's, it's like having PTSD. Yeah, you're like, oh god, oh, yeah. Now I remember. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's what. That's yeah. one of the things that I that's love about this movie is that it's so. They're so deep. There's so many other characters. And it's not just jump scares and gore. They actually spend a lot of time developing this story and the backstory and how everyone's connected. Mm -hmm. All these people in different realms of New York City that all just yeah. happen to come together in this one moment. That was something like when we were watching it, I, I kept saying, like, like, John Hurd goes throughout most of this movie without getting involved in the plot until, like, the, the like second half of the film. When he finally gets involved. That's one of the things that's weird about it, too, is that you could nearly take out any person in the movie, just completely eliminate them. And it doesn't really change the story that much, which is sometimes that's bad because that means that there's no focus. But in this case, it's good because no one is more important than another person. Yeah, they're all equal. Mm -hmm. That's just what I loved about it is that it was so you could pick any character to be the one that you're connected to. And then you were interested in the movie because you were interested in whatever was going to happen with them. Was it the model girlfriend? Was it the painter? Was it the main cop whose wife got killed? Was it the 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 evil government the, or the person running the homeless yeah. food bank? Like who? You could pick a character mm -hmm. and tie yourself to them. Almost all of yeah. them, actually all of them, make it through the entire movie. No one just dies and then that character you're connected to just is gone. Yeah. Daniel Stern's character, he plays the soup, the guy that runs the soup kitchen. And he's this total former hippie, believes in all the secret government stuff and space suits. I mean, he's basically Joe Rogan. <laughs> He's also like a former criminal, right? Because that's how the cop knows him. So he's like, oh, yeah. So yeah, so he's, he's basically yeah. Joe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that, I, that threw me off was that the cop was super chill about his wife being dead, though. He was just like showing up to work and he called whoever was like the the commissioner or the captain you of the police. You mean missing? He didn't know she was dead Oh, yet. yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, she's missing. And he's just like, you can see he's nervous. But he's like, Whatever, I got a job to do, so I'm going to go do my stuff. And no one else in the office knew what was no going on. No one knew, yeah. Because when he finally broke, he was like, and yeah. then call, and also put a missing person out for this. It's like, your, your wife? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And, and like the whole time he's so concerned about, oh, I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell people. I'm going to tell everybody. That's his big threat to the chief the whole time is that he's going to tell people. Shouldn't you be more concerned about the you know, that your wife hasn't come back from her walk with the dog like shouldn't that be your focus right now uh, that was a, not that worried was about a... telling people about stuff going on in the sewer <laughs> <laughs> that was a great moment in the movie though where he's talking to aj or the reverend he's yeah. talking to him and he's he finally blurts out to him that his wife is missing yeah because he keeps saying why do you care so much why do mm -hmm. you care about people that live in the tunnels and like yeah, he blurts out his wife's missing, yeah. and then he says the corner of this street and this street, and AJ clicks with him like, oh my god, you live in this neighborhood. Yeah. And so he was thinking, cop, lots of money, lives mm -hmm. far away, doesn't know anything about this part of the city and the homeless people and stuff like that. Then it finally hit him, oh man, the captain of the, po of the police in this precinct lives in my neighborhood. Yeah, and, he's like, and then he started being apologetic, like, I'm sorry, I didn't know, and... Maybe she's okay. Maybe she'll mm -hmm. come home and it's nothing. <laughs> like, no, she's never done this before. Yeah, he really loved that dog. <laughs> I mean, it was a cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> I also finally realized, I guess, you know, in past, when movies were always took place in the sewers of New York, so I was like, whatever, that's just some movie thing that they do. But the movies are starting to stack up. 
And are there really that many abandoned sewers in the city of New York? Is this whole city just Maybe. on top of layers and layers of empty sewers? No, I, I don't think they're supposed well, to be abandoned. I think they're just supposed to be sewers. And there's like pipes because there was pipes running through there. Like, aren't, aren't they just supposed to be like that... they, can, they can still like maintenance them so they can go down in there, but they still actually are sewers. No, see, I think over the years, as technology has changed, they've just abandoned and built new sewers on top of them and on top of them. And so there's just series after series of just abandoned just, just we don't some need abandoned, these anymore. We're, we're done with these. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I've watched Dirty Jobs. Okay. <laughs> One uh, time uh, they went down in the sewers, and John is right. Like he's right. Like they just get new technology, and they just don't take down the old sewers. So it's like all these sewers just running around all over the place. They're like, we're gonna put in a new sewer with like really literally above the <laughs> the old one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, yeah. Rather than demo or change up the the old one, it's like screw. It, we'll just dig a new one in on top of it. <laughs> it's it's just crazy to think all these years I've been like, this, that, whatever. That's stupid. There was no, be no way. Now I'm starting to be like, okay, I guess there is, and that's like all the homes people and that's and, where all the pizza rats live. Yeah, the <laughs> they take all your pizza and they bring it to their rat friends. You're, you're, <laughs> no, see, he's starting to believe in what this movie's about. It's about the mole people. The more people are real, and they're living in the sewers under New York. And, and they're the only way you can actually get rid of more people, the only way you can actually get rid of more people is either with traps or those little poison worms, those little poison gummy worms. I've tried those sonic stakes. The sonic stakes don't work. It just chases them about 10 feet away. That's all it does. So you, you have to get them with either the poison or the traps. That's how you kill more people. Not the sticky traps, though. You'll never get rid of those. They're too big. <laughs> they get stuck to your dog. And yeah. It's, 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 it's pain in the butt. <laughs> On the opposite end of that, though, I do think that this movie, one of the, the political messages that's in the movie, if you can believe it, in Chud. <laughs> Chud was chock full of political messages, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. One of them about respecting homeless people yeah. and helping them. And like, like, yeah, they live underground and there's the food kitchen aspect of it. But then also like they're trying to save them, try not to let the city gas them and, and kill all the homeless people that are underneath there. And then the the photographer that taking picture of them for the news article and all around every corner. It's all about you can't just treat homeless people like they're disposable. Yeah, you can't take advantage of them, which is what their photographer was doing, right? He was taking mm -hmm. pictures of them, making money on it doing these exposés with these writers and then he was like basically not caring about them like whatever like yeah um you know and that brings up the photographer so like so john heard he's so we we meet him at the beginning of the movie and he's hanging out and his girlfriend or wife is like a model and so like like we basically the first couple times we see him, it's like date night. Like first he's taking pictures, then they're going to a shoot, then he's taking pictures of her nude, and then <laughs> they're like just going out to eat. So like, I, at, and at all these points, he's doing whatever possible to avoid having anything to do with crawling around in the sewer to take pictures of more homeless people, <laughs> or at least that's the way it seems. Uh, because he is avoiding his buddy Murph, who can suck a duck, apparently. <laughs> Can he really suck a duck, though? Uh, uh, he, he manages this. Finally, Murphy talks him into going down and, and checking this out. And he ends up, and that's why he ends up getting kind of stuck down there when they plan on unleashing the gas to basically just murder all the mutated homeless people. <laughs> I That's the thing that threw me for a loop is that they, that story ends up paying off. The model photographer story and then... You add in, oh, I'm pregnant, and that which which would normally feel totally unnecessary and totally like just tacked on. But you get this like real life aspect of the movie where these this couple and what they're gonna do, like you're saying, it's all a bunch of date nights, and then she's pregnant, and now he has this sudden. You would think like the story would turn like he has this sudden urge to really pr protect her, but he goes the opposite direction, right? He wants to protect his friend AJ. And then the homeless people that are underneath the city it has nothing to do with protecting his girlfriend. He just leaves her ass at home all by herself to fight the chud with a pirate sword. Yeah, she's a, that's his wife, by the way. She said that yes. like my husband's down this hole or whatever. And yeah, and also that's the, the, the realest conversation they've ever had about pregnancy in a movie. Oh, okay. where she's like, I don't think I should be. I don't think I should have this baby. Do you? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> we really.
really going down a weird path here. He wasn't all that. I mean, he wasn't the most enthusiastic either. I mean, no. his basic response was like, "Well, how do you feel about it?" Because yeah. I can either I can act either way. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Well, how, do you think you should be a mom?" Because I don't know. I'm not sure you should be a mom either. <laughs> I think he's feeling out like, like, do you want to be a mom? Because I might just leave. <laughs> and when the chud come to get I mean, he's her, got a career taking pictures of nude women. <laughs> so I have lots of questions about the chud, though. <laughs> I, have, right. I have lots of them. One, man, there's a lot of them. Yeah. How many are there? There's a whole bunch of them. And so are they getting, are they becoming that way because of the radiation or are they becoming that way because they're like zombies where if they bite someone they be you become a chud because victor becomes a chud and is that because of the radiation or is that because he got attacked by one i think it's because of the radiation because she got attacked by one she got bit didn't the wife get bit that's model? my theory on bud of chud yeah she got bit in the ankle oh my god maybe it's their baby <laughs> uh, oh you think he has it's a, a baby of a chud, chud. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I I I'm following now. So maybe she does, maybe she makes the maybe she's the one that makes the return in the number 2. I <laughs> mean, I don't know. I looked at the cast and there's not a lot of not a lot of repeats in there. <laughs> not a lot of anything, really. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my first question with the chud. The second question is is when we see them as a pack where they're all together when AJ sees it, he's trapped down there and he sees them. There's the chud that you see in this jump scare scenes, which are really scary and really creepy looking. And then in the same thing with the scene where the girlfriend is at home and they attack her, they look great. And then there's the chud that just like doing yoga in the sewer and they just clearly have like burlap bags over there <laughs> flan wearing flannels. <laughs> Clearly, some of them were not. They were like, we're not going to invest in you as a chud. Okay? <laughs> Pretend you're a chud. Do it. It seemed like if they're, they're, if they're cannibalistic, that they wouldn't travel in packs. Because cannibalistic would mean that they eat each other, too. Yeah, that that's actually a good point. I think the thing that distracted me more was like how they were dealing with it. So, okay, let's accept the fact that they're dumping nuclear waste in the sewers below New York. All right, so we're, we're, we'll get past that and how, how much of an EPA nightmare that is. <laughs> so, But now it's changing these people into, into chuds, cannibalistic human underground dwellers. And the fact that they have an, an abbreviation for it means that this has happened before. Oh, yeah. Like, like damn it, we should have learned after Chicago. <laughs> you know, they clearly don't know how to deal with it. And I love that the first way they deal with it is a bunch of cops with flamethrowers. <laughs> like, let's burn them out first. <laughs> like, there's no like, oh, we need to get FEMA in here or something. We need to get medical treat. No, no. Get the flamethrowers. Let's burn these suckers out. We got to get ready for the morning commute tomorrow. <laughs> I think it's because you hit the nail on the head when we were watching the movie. It's 1984. So who are all the cops? They were all mil they're all probably military people who served in Vietnam. So when they thought people mm -hmm. in sewers, the first thing they thought was Viet Cong in tunnels. And the only way you get them out is with flamethrowers. Yeah, flame and so yeah. they just flamethrower it up and we're going to go get themselves some Viet Cong. But what about the people that live in the sewers? <laughs> Mind their own business living down there. Going to get flamethrowed. <laughs> it's going to get warm. Yeah. <laughs> Every manhole looking like the top of a so, burger and then, king. <laughs> <laughs> so then that doesn't work because they end up getting all, all the all that ends up happening is they all get eaten by the chuds. So now we're just <laughs> feeding the chuds. <laughs> multiple so multiple the, chuds. Their next chuds. solution is let's park on top of all the manholes so they can't get out. And then we're going to divert gas in there. But when fires from the flamethrowers cause an explosion, it's like, oh, it's just a little explosion. We're just going to blow up a little bit of Soho. No one's going to miss that. Yeah, that's exactly what they say, too. Just a little bit of it. No big deal. You know, people live there above ground, too. But don't worry about that. <laughs> So I think the thing that got us talking the most during this movie was that shower head. Yeah, and that what sounds... the hell was that? <laughs> Why did it look like a robot with three eyes? So I called it the Johnny Five shower yeah, head. Exactly. <laughs> also, I'm disappointed. Yes. I yeah. thought that there was going to be some kind of sexy chud time, and there wasn't. <laughs> we were hoping this was going to turn into Toxic <laughs> yeah, Avenger. Exactly. 
maybe that chud had a lot to work with and we'll never find out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to, I, I actively tried Googling because I want to find that shower head now. <laughs> I, I want it. I want Johnny Five bathing me every day now. I thought you were going a different direction. And I was like, he was looking for the chud <laughs> wang. <laughs> No, no. I actively Googled it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> of course, now the shower nozzle would be the thing that we would all pay attention to because we pay attention to like the little stuff like that, which is another a quick rant here. Dominic rant time. <laughs> it's one of the things I hate about modern streaming services is that when it gets to the credits, they want to minimize it and show you what they're going to autoplay next. Like, first of all, I didn't ask you to autoplay. But second of all, I love reading the credits yes. because I love seeing the little yes. things, paying attention to little things. Don't try and rush me off the credits. Yes. I want to see all the funny names of people that worked on this. We do it all the time yes. as a family. We're like, look at that name. Look at that stupid name. <laughs> yep. That's that's how I figured out the Parnell Hall was playing Judson. I was watching the credits. I was like, oh, he was also in there. Oh. Um, but yeah, yes to both of those. I'm tired of Netflix assuming I give a crap about whatever they're promoting. I would like to watch the credits and then make that decision. In this house, autoplay should always be off unless it's going to play that extinction or movie or whatever. That extraction. Movie. Extraction. Uh, extraction movie with uh, I'll show you, boy. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. I don't know there what, we go. Whatever that movie was we watched. Four. I don't know the name or the name of the actor. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is Melissa was really into it. I love that movie. I was so into it. I was crushed when I thought he was dead at the end. I was like, oh my god, he died. Why? Spoiler. <laughs> but he's not dead. I, so it's I'm okay. gonna be honest. I won't be honest. I, 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 I didn't I didn't I didn't like that movie that much. <gasps> oh um, my god, we gotta fight now. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I, I like the Marky Mark one. Yeah, uh, we haven't seen that one. There. I like that one a little bit better. I, yeah, we I haven't seen it. the Marky Mark was, one. Uh, you know, I just realized is that the best part about us moving in this podcast, because John and Melissa have uh, strong words for each other throughout the recording. <laughs> so these are about differences in opinions about the movies. And now we're in a proxim close enough proximity that we can actually meet up at the park and they could fight. <laughs> <laughs> We have differing opinions because we are both very cultured in pop culture, whereas you true just story. watch the same like three cartoons. <laughs> so I mean, truer words were never spoken in this house. All he does is watch the same things. We start new shows. He's like, "Yeah, we're not gonna go back to that." I'm like, "We just watched like two episodes of it. Let's go back." No, in a month, in a month. So I know. I first of all, I saw someone on Twitter say that. They watched some show that they binge watched all sixty one episodes in like five days or what? something like that. Yeah, <laughs> no. So like, I, 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 yeah, that's something. In the last month, <laughs> I've watched exactly two episodes of that show, Jack Ryan. There's only ten episodes or something like that in the entire season. It'll take me another six months to finish it. Yeah, I'm like, so we're we gonna watch that show or what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, on the flip side, in the past week, I have watched every single one of the Marvel movies that they've released so far. And I'm also making my rounds almost all the way completely through the sci-fi show Dark Matter that went three mm. seasons with about 22 episodes a season. Yeah. And that's just this week. So <laughs> By the time we get to the end of Chud, all of these dis disparate stories that are happening, they all come together. There isn't one that's just left out. Oh, yeah, this person, they we talked about him, then they just disappeared. It was like a hallmark of a B-movie where they introduce some side plot and then it, it goes nowhere and you literally never see the people again. In Chud, they all come together and they all have to help each other at the end in order to be able to to close out the story. Like you said, everything kind of culminates, you know, and I think like a lot of it starts with like Murph gets eaten, you know, but he can suck a duck. <laughs> The whole time, the Rev and the photographer are trying to find their way out from the sewers. And you've got the wife. She's pleading that they don't get gas um, And the cops trying to get corporate guy, trying to nail him down and arrest him. Who, man, the whole time, he's just got this, like, scowl on his face. He looks like a pissed off Monopoly guy kind of deal. <laughs> like he's the dean of a school Which, that has yeah. an out of control on house on their property. I think we've rambled on enough about this movie. There's so much more to this movie. There's so many other miscellaneous scenes that happen in this movie that are, that are really great. But I think we got to wrap this one up. Let's go give our final thoughts on Chud. <laughs> 
We have to say it that way every time. Yes. Should. <laughs> Should. <laughs> now that we've all said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, what are your final thoughts on Chud? Why are you recommending this as a you should watch it? There are some older sci-fi movies just that just hold up no matter how old they get. Invasion of the Body Snatchers and stuff like that. Where it's just, it's, it's just a good, fun sci-fi movie. And it doesn't matter if it, after 10, 20, 30 years, if, if the effects are cheesy, the story holds up. And the thing that turned me on about Chud was that the story was really well thought out and really well presented. And like you said, you know, all of the characters played their own part and they all were just as important to the movie. And it didn't need a big name star for me to say, uh, for me to enjoy it, you know, or stay locked into it. For me, Chud is, is it, it's going to join those types of sci-fi movies that just hold up over the years. Because I, I really kind of got that feeling, that kind of a swamp bang kind of sci-fi classic. I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the that in the end. So not only did they kind of talk about a message, like a strong message with dealing with homelessness and stuff. But at the very end, they don't really solve the sewer monster problem. So there's still totally sewer monsters in New York. <laughs> uh, they still have a, a total issue uh, chud infestation. And so because they didn't deal with it the correct way. If you have a chud infestation at your house, you need to set traps and spray for humans. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> Melissa, what do you have to say in your closing thoughts about chud? I will be honest. When, when we picked this movie, I was not as enthusiastic as you guys are. Because sometimes I don't like the practical effects because they're gross. <laughs> 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 Some movies are gross, and I don't like them. I don't like gross It just things. looks sticky. Yeah, it does. It's moist and sticky, and I don't like it. <laughs> but this movie was different because it actually has, like, it, I mean, it was. I thought it was well written. Like, really, honestly, I thought it was well written. Like, the story actually made sense. It was cohesive. <laughs> and it had a big, strong message. You hear about that, Parnell? You did a good job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Had a strong message, like politically, for several different things, not just like not just homelessness, but what about like like the government and conspiracy and like how they're lying to people and how they think they can just do whatever they want and like just dump this toxic waste in the underneath. Also, that they were making, they were breeding killing machines. That's what they were doing. So there's all kinds of facets of mm. the story that go off, and you're like, really, this is this is chud, but it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> and I I, I also. <laughs> I also want to know what the hell that shower head was, and I want to find it. Because it looked like a robot head with the water shooting out of the middle eyeball. Yes. <laughs> I really, really love this movie. Now, I'm a sucker for practical effects. If you give me the choice, I will watch The Thing every mm -hmm. week for the rest of my life because of the practical effects that are in that movie. The same thing with Videodrome with the fly with there's all kinds of movies that i absolutely love 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 because of the practical effects and this movie they do a pretty good job it's a couple of scenes okay they have a tight budget they have a hard tough budget but but for the most part it's really good the other thing that i really liked about this movie is that if you love the movie Mimic, this movie is for you because this is essentially Mimic, but not giant cockroaches, radiated humanoids. That's what it, that's what Chud is. So what I'm saying is that Mimic ripped off Chud. That's what I'm getting at. And that's why I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, if you love Mimic or that type of movie, this movie is for sure for you. Like you will love Chud if you if you haven't seen it, you will want to watch this. My only disappointment when we get to the end of the movie is that they never found Bosch's chin. It's just missing. <laughs> <laughs> they never find it. He put out a messy report for it and everything. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for us this week on Go with the Heat. We hope you enjoyed this special edition episode of You Should Watch It for Chud. You would love to hear from you. Email us go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know if you like this format too. You like the shorter format, you like us talking about you know, more out there in movies, things that aren't just about karate, movies that are a little bit off the beaten path, too. Or if, and if you want us to do some more modern stuff, you want us to do that Marky Mark action movie, you want us to do Extraction, The Raid, come on, people email about us watching The Raid. You want us please. to do Dune? 
<laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. It's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. <laughs> go to the website, go with the You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe. And like I said, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think of this format. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.